Hello and welcome to today's qualifications webinar, Your Next Steps Towards Becoming a Marketing Manager. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so that you know how to participate. The presentation will last for approximately 40 minutes. You'll be able to send text questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the chat box of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation. We'll collect and address as many of these as we can during the Q&A session at the end. Unfortunately, we can't send the slides of the presentation. However, the webinar will be made available to watch on demand via our Content Hub exchange within the next couple of working days. I'd now like to hand you over to our presenter for today, Red Barrington. Hi, everybody, and thank you for joining me today. Today's webinar, we're looking at how you can move towards your next step uh, towards becoming a marketing manager. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about the Chartered Institute Marketing uh, Certificate in Professional uh, Marketing Qualification. As my colleague says, if you have questions, do just type them along and we'll answer those at, at the end of today's session. So in today's webinar, I'm going to provide you with just a brief overview of the CIM qualifications just to put this a little bit more into context. We're going to look a bit about how marketing, what involved in the marketing manager's roles, the kind of skills that you now need as a marketing manager. We're then going to focus very much on that CIM certificate in professional marketing. We're going to look across the different modules. I'm going to present you a little bit of a case study of one of our students, and then I'm going to look more widely at CIM memberships and how you can start studying for the certificate in professional marketing. But before we go on, a little bit about me. As, uh, as Sarah says, my name is Red Barrington. I have worked in digital marketing, across digital marketing projects and strategy for over 16 years. I work with brands such as Vodafone. I work with brands such as uh, the YHA uh, Hostel Association. Um, I've worked with brands across uh, internationally and globally, including in the Caribbean. I've also been working for over 11 years um, teaching CIM students, uh, like potentially you guys out there, and I've been working with the Oxford College of Marketing. I develop a lot of training programs and also courses for the college too. I'm also a chartered marketer. The Oxford College of Marketing are an accredited study centre with the CIM, and uh, they've supported students with CIM qualifications for over 20 years across global study centres and also through our online distance learning programmes. There are lots of different study centres available, and uh, I'm, they're available through looking at the CIM website at cim.co.uk. So as I said, we're going to start today by looking at the CIM qualifications themselves. And as you can see on the slide here, um, you can move through four different levels of qualifications with the Chartered Institute of Marketing. And it really depends on your experience as to which level suits you. The first stage of the, well, the first level of CIM qualification is the Foundation Certificate in Professional Marketing. And this provides an introduction to marketing to those who perhaps don't work in marketing or looking to start working in marketing. It's also suitable maybe for entrepreneurs who are just setting up their own business and want to find out and understand marketing a little bit more for their own business. What we're going to talk to you about today is the Certificate in Professional Marketing. And this is all uh, focusing on building tactical marketing skills. So understanding how uh, you can put together marketing campaigns, uh, basic marketing plans, learning about digital tools and techniques. I'll talk a bit more about that in detail shortly. And this is suitable for um, new marketing executives, marketing, um, uh, uh, yeah, sorry, marketing executives, marketing assistants, um, but also it's um, suitable for perhaps those who are aspiring to be marketing managers, which could be like yourselves. Um, and then we've got the Diploma in Professional Marketing. This is where you're probably already working as a marketing manager and you're looking to develop strategic capabilities. So this would be for experienced marketing executives, so those maybe with two to three years experience and also current marketing managers. And then finally, we've got the Marketing Leadership Program, which is for those who are very experienced marketing managers, sort of five to seven years experience or consultants. And the focus for that Marketing Leadership Program is about developing leadership skills and strategic business capabilities. If you are um, in, an international student, there is a further uh, postgraduate diploma in marketing that you could look at too. But what you can see is there's a definite pathway for 
for you as a student and also as a marketing practitioner, for, right from being a new into marketing right the way through to those who have senior roles. Um, so the certificate in professional marketing, which we're focusing on today, uh, and its digital equivalent, which I'll talk a bit more about in a second, is the equivalent of a foundation degree. So these, as I said, are for marketing execs or marketing assistants. So you've probably been working in marketing for less than two years. They're designed to really develop your skills as a marketer with the aim of driving you towards being that marketing manager. I'm not sure if you are aware, but the CIM have recently revised their syllabus. Uh, and so there's lots of um, adjusted content and some new and exciting um, modules as well that are included in with that revised syllabus. And one of the exciting developments is that there's what we call a digital pathway. So it means that you can actually get, uh, build um, and uh, gain a specific digital qualification across any level. So right from the foundation certificate in digital professional marketing um, and right the way through, uh, through the certificate, diploma, and into then the marketing leadership program, which doesn't necessarily have a specific digital aspect to it. So you'll, if you choose to study the certificate in professional digital marketing, this really then focuses on building your digital uh, marketing skills at a tactical level. So it's really useful not just for um, marketing execs and marketing assistants, but those of you who might be wanting to move towards digital marketing management, or you're working as a digital assistant right now, or a digital um, marketing executive. So as I said, the start, the today's um, Today's uh, webinar was focusing on about how you can become, and the next step towards becoming a marketing manager. And when I started putting together this webinar, I started thinking about well, what's actually involved in a marketing manager's role, um, and what skills do marketing managers uh, actually need. And what I ended up doing was going and looking lots of different marketing manager job roles and listing the skills that marketing managers need, and I popped them into a word cloud, which you can see the results of here. Um, and you can see there's some certain terms that have come up which are really quite important, marketing campaigns being one, management being another, um, things like budgeting, copywriting, social media, writing, website analytics, media skills. So some real um, important aspects. And what I wanted to highlight to you really is these are some of the skills that marketing managers need, but also how these can be developed by studying the certificate in professional marketing or the certificate in professional digital marketing. What I want to do now is demonstrate to you uh, a little bit more about some of the benefits first it's studying at level four, but then move on and talk more about the individual um, modules that make up the certificate uh, in professional marketing and the options that you've got available and how really they will support your career into the future. Um, but in terms of just generally a level four qualification with the CIM, as I said to you before, this is the equivalent of a foundation degree. Um, uh, and so the, the, the key benefits for you studying this and being a student is really that you are blending practical skills with academic understanding. These are practitioner qualifications. So we, we're stepping away from uh, teaching you just the theory of marketing, but we're going to teach you, we're able to teach you how to apply that to your organization. So you're going to learn things that you can actually apply in your day-to-day -day job roles to improve yourself as a marketer and also move you towards being a marketing manager and getting you to start thinking more widely about the role that marketing plays within the organization and how marketing can lead an organization as well. So as you can see here on the slide, I've suggested that you know, this qualification can benefit you in terms of increasing your confidence in the marketing discipline. But most importantly, it can improve your employability. Now, often recruiters will actually look out for a CIM qualification on a potential candidate CV. So having one on your CV can really help differentiate you and also improve your employability as well. It shows your dedication to marketing and it shows your interest in marketing as well, especially perhaps if you might have come away with a degree that isn't related to marketing as well. It could show that you have got knowledge in that particular area too. Um, also, studying uh, and joining the CIM and then studying
a level four qualification can really help you stay up to date with the latest marketing trends, helps you stay ahead in your field. There's some very, you know, we've, some of the modules, which we'll talk a bit more about shortly, are really focus on getting you, uh, getting to grips with some digital technology, understanding how that is changing, and also uh, how technology is driving changes for planning campaigns as well. Another key opportunity and benefit for studying at this level, and also more widely with CIM, is that you know, you've got opportunity to network with other marketers. Now, that's just not through going through to a classroom. You don't have to study in the classroom to network with other, uh, with other marketers. Uh, many of the colleges out there, the study centers out there, offer forums and Facebook groups. The Oxford College of Marketing, we have Facebook groups for uh, our students and we, um, uh, we use them quite actively to help students network and communicate with each other, especially good for study support. Um, but CIM also have their own local and uh, regional events that you can join in again with an opportunity to, market, uh, to network and market yourself as well. Um, CIM qualifications are globally recognized. Uh, you, you've got that opportunity of having on your CV that international recognition of a, of a qualification. And, you know, CIM play a vital role in setting industry standards as well. And finally, you can choose between two qualifications at this level, as I've already shown you. Uh, so the, tradition, uh, the traditional sort of certificate in professional marketing, but also you can choose that digital pathway as well. So I've given you sort of a bit of an overview of the benefits of this qualification, but let's now look at the qualification structure itself before I then give you more, dev uh, more detail about the individual uh, modules and the course content. I'm hoping you can read and see these, but this is the qualification structure. Uh, for the certificate in um, professional digital marketing or the certificate in professional marketing, you have to undertake three modules. Two of them are mandatory. Uh, the first one is applied marketing, and the second one is planning campaigns. You will then choose an elective um, module, either customer insights or digital marketing techniques. And the elective module you select will determine the qualification you come out with. So as you can see, if you select digital marketing techniques, you will gain a certificate in professional digital marketing. Um, and if you choose customer insights, you will, uh, your qualification with certificate in professional marketing. You'll also notice here that, I've, uh, that the uh, diagram shows how the qualification is assessed. And you'll see that there are two modules. So the mandatory module planning campaigns and your elective module will be assessed by a written assignment. And your um, Mandatory Module Applied Marketing is assessed by an exam which is currently a multiple choice examination. So let's now look a little bit more detail in what encompasses those specific modules and what you could learn and also how it can support your desire to become a marketing manager. So the first module that you'll probably study um, on this particular qualification will be Applied Marketing. This is a mandatory module, as I suggested, and it's assessed by an examination. Applied Marketing really is your Marketing 101. It's getting you to understand some of the basics of marketing um, and the role that marketing plays within an organization and some of the key concepts that underpin the activities of the marketer. So thinking about the customer behavior, uh, some of the key marketing concepts such as the marketing mix, uh, such as undertaking an, uh, an audit of the marketing environment, what the marketing environment is, some of the tools and the techniques that you might use to analyze that. Um, thinking about and then about how the marketing mix and the digital marketing mix can be applied to organizations. The idea uh, of apl the applied marketing module is not just about teaching you the mar about marketing theory, but also how getting you to understand how it applies across a range of business, um, range of businesses and organizations. So not just B2C, but B2B and not for profit. Um, and the key thing here is about the application. There's been a real step change in um, the qualifications that the CIM have produced. They're much more practitioner based now. It's you know, they're really designed to get you. Um, to start applying the tools and techniques uh, and theories that you learn as part of your uh, studies. The next mandatory module um, 
the next uh, man mandatory module is planning campaigns. Um, as we saw when we looked at that word cloud, uh, planning and managing campaigns is a key skill that's desired for marketing managers. So this module will really, really help and support you in developing skills into planning and then managing campaigns. As I said, this is a mandatory module, and this is assessed by an assignment. So your assignment, you're actually putting together a, a campaign that's suitable for an organization of your choice. So this could be the organization that you're working for. So again, it's very practical, and it's something that you can use then in your workplace. So as the, probably the, you might uh, gathered by the title, this is all about developing, this module is all about developing effective marketing campaigns and how you can develop relevant marketing activities to influence and engage your customers or consumers. And this could be businesses, it could be not-for-profit organizations, etc. So you're going to learn about the stages of planning campaigns, uh, you'll, you'll gain skills and knowledge as to how to then implement and prepare those campaigns as well as monitoring and measuring them. But again, it's very practical. So uh, the materials here are not just about well, the theory of putting it together. It's very much about how these apply across a different range of industries, giving you examples. A lot of the materials that uh, the Office College Marketing I've been putting together for them um, really do focus on the different campaigns that organizations have run and looking at the strengths and weaknesses of those particular campaigns and what we can learn um, to then take forward for our own organization um, uh, organizational campaigns too. The next module I'm going to talk about is the elective module, which is digital marketing techniques. So if you undertook this particular module, this will result in you receiving a certificate in professional digital marketing. So we might have covered a little bit about digital and planning campaigns, but digital marketing techniques is focusing um, more on pure digital techniques um, and uh, some of the digital tools and techniques that organizations can use. I think it's important to point out here, again, we're not just explaining what these tools and techniques are. We're going beyond that now. Um, many of you who, be, who work in marketing already or are sort of new into marketing, you'll have some idea. You'll know how social media works. But this is starting to get to think about actually how can we um, practically use these tools and the different digital tools. Um, how can we use them and, and how, uh, you know, what examples are there of businesses successfully using them now to achieve their objectives? How could, uh, other, or how could our organization organization then use these techniques to acquire customers, um, uh, to convert them, or to engage with them uh, once they've bought uh, from us or engage with them in the longer term. Um, you know, another key aspect that this covers is aspects around content and content marketing, the role that content plays in digital marketing activities and digital marketing plans. And as part of this, you'll also learn how to develop and evaluate digital marketing plans, uh, as well as thinking about how we can measure those activities that we have planned too. So again, as, as part of what we've done with the college in developing our own um, materials for this particular course, it's very practical. We've looked at lots of different examples. Again, not just B2C. Many people think that, oh, I can't do a module around digital marketing because I work for a small business or I work for B2B or I work for a not-for-profit organization. Digital is, is very applicable across every single market, and, we've, um, and it's very important that uh, you will learn as part of this module, module content, how it can apply across different market sectors. And there is lots of application and practical um, aspects to it. Customer Insights is the other alternative elective, and this will mean that you gain the certificate in professional marketing. The, um, with Customer Insights, this is all focused on the customer. The customer is the heart of everything we do in marketing. And so this module focuses on how we can better understand our customers, their needs and their wants, to drive loyalty, to drive retention. Um, so as I say, it's all about understanding our customers, of their behavior, their current experience, the customer journey, uh, and also then undertaking research to better inform the marketing activities we might do in the future. So how can we use those insights? How can those insights then feed into marketing campaigns to create better campaigns? So this is, covers some real key things around what influences behavior, how can we enhance the customer journey and the customer experience, and then how can we undertake and apply research 
to gain insights and inform our marketing activities. It's all about analyzing the customer and what insights can we gain to then use. What's really good about the revised CIM syllabus is actually you could do all four modules and gain um, two qualifications. That's something to talk to your study center about if you are interested in that. I kind of wanted to show you, uh, share with you a, a, a case study, a young lady called Emily, who uh, is a student of, uh, of the Oxford College of Marketing. And she came to us and started studying the certificate in professional marketing. And she felt um, that the qualification gave her a lot more confidence with marketing around planning and strategy. Um, she was very focused on managing social media and content beforehand, but now after studying the, um, uh, the, the certificate in professional marketing, she's got a lot more confidence to now understand marketing's wider role and also then how she can approach the campaigns and also thinking about uh, think about marketing at more strategic level. Um, I had a chat with Emily and uh, she's now studying with us uh, for the professional diploma in marketing uh, to take her understanding and learning to the next level. Uh, I had a chat with her and she said, you know, that the certificate was a real launch pad for her and her career. And since she completed the certificate, uh, she's uh, now relocated to London and climbed the career ladder, gone from a marketing executive to a campaign manager for a large London organization. So it's really catapulted her career and she's um, been a, a, an exemplary student for us as well. So it just gives you a little bit of an idea of how such a qualification can benefit you um, and benefit your career. But it's not just about the career. Um, CIM uh, as an organization and being a member of the CIM, which you will be if you choose to study, uh, you'll be a, a studying member. There's lots of benefits as well that can support your career too. Um, you get access to hundreds of ebooks, so it's really great for studying um, uh, by, through this membership. Some of the core textbooks are within the ebook central that you'll have access to. I actually still use ebook central, you know, especially when I'm doing a plan or I'm putting together something for a, a for a client of mine, I often go to eBook Central just to look for, um, just to check something perhaps, or maybe find a framework that will help me. Uh, so it's a really useful resource. Uh, there's also loads of studying resources that you've got available to you, um, including uh, study and assessment guides, so they're very useful. You've also got marketing resources, such as reports, journals um, as well. So you've got access to the latest marketing journals through uh, EBSCO. You've also got research as well. So if you're doing something for work, uh, those sorts of resources can be really useful. There's a CIM content hub with loads of online articles. Uh, they've got a whole range of topics uh, keeping you up to date with the latest market development, so get marketing developments. So again, um, lots of useful information at your fingertips. Uh, practical insight webinars, again, these are really useful for widening your understanding on some of the marketing aspects, but from a practical uh, uh, perspective. So again, the focus here is really on uh, practitioners, uh, teaching other practitioners uh, some practical aspects. Uh, Catalyst magazine, as you can see in the image here, that's the magazine from the CIM that covers a range of topics and contemporary topics, uh, really useful and helpful uh, for marketers too. And finally, uh, it, we've got the CIM Mentor Scheme, which you'll have access to as a CIM member. Now, this is designed to match uh, aspiring marketers with uh, developing professional marketers with experienced uh, marketers as a way to sort of mentor them and support them uh, through their career and what they need to do next. Um, I uh, have a, 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 a mentor that I utilize. Um, it's really helpful uh, across my career and especially working uh, with a range of clients and running my own business. It's really super helpful. And it's something that you, you know, anyone can really, really benefit from, especially in the early part of your career when you're making a lot of choices. Um, so it can, the CI Mentor Scheme is excellent and certainly worth, uh, a, certainly a very good benefit of the CIM membership. So I've talked a lot about the qualification um, itself and how it can support you in your next step in your career and moving towards a marketing manager. But what about the qualification uh, entry requirements? So in order to undertake 
this particular qualification, you'll need one of what we one or more of what's listed on the slide. So you'll either need to have a relevant level three qualification, such as the foundation certificate in professional marketing or the foundation certificate in uh, professional digital marketing, um, and you'll need at least one year's experience in uh, in the industry uh, as well. So marketing. Um, You'll need, as I say, so some form sort of professional practice. But there is a diagnostic tool that's available uh, from the CIM, and if you are interested in studying uh, for the CIM, uh, CIM Level 4 qualification, uh, you can get access to that from a study centre such as the Oxford College of Marketing. There are lots of different study options as well if you are interested in undertaking this qualification. Uh, three key uh, options are available to you. Not all study centres will offer these options um, for all qualifications. Uh, so again, it's worth speaking to more than one um, more than one study centre, just especially if you want, for example, classroom teaching. Which you choose is entirely up to you. So the first option, you've got part-time evening uh, classes that you can attend. Now, this is usually a block of evening classes once a week between around eight to ten weeks' worth of teaching. And people that choose uh, part-time evening courses generally like the interactivity uh, uh, of, of the classes, but also the direction that they get from tutors. Um, at the Oxford College of Marketing, we use um, all marketing practitioners, so all of our uh, tutors are currently working either as consultants or in marketing manager or marketing director roles. So it makes it quite interesting. Um, another option for studying is intensive weekends, which is also called what we call blended learning. So here you'll go to uh, a weekend for each module, uh, usually one or two days. It, that depends on the study centre. Uh, you'll get uh, that that teaching over a weekend, and you'll probably learn the entire syllabus in that time. And um, so it's very sort of quick and intensive, as the name suggests. And then you'll move on to distance learning to then support you uh, through the rest of the module and through your assessments. And then finally, you can study via distance learning. So you can study online anywhere, at any time, any place in, in the world, which is fantastic. Um, and so at the Oxford College of Marketing, we have an online, uh, online study support system uh, and where you can uh, listen to webinars, for example, to support your learning. And you can also have interactive learning sessions, which some of the other study centers also provide. So what's, again, distance learning is fantastic if you are trying to juggle quite a lot of things and you can't always commit to studying um, at once a week in a classroom. Um, many of our students who study with us uh, love the distance learning, especially because they have that interactivity opportunity uh, with webinars and also supportive forums and Facebook groups too. So that's all I wanted to cover in today's um, webinar. I do hope you found it useful and this is uh, grown your interest perhaps in studying the certificate in professional marketing. Uh, there's some details there on the final slide if you're interested in the qualifications and membership and how you can get in touch with the CIM. If you have any questions now, I'll be glad to answer them for you. Thank you, Red. Um, so we're now going to answer some of the questions that have been submitted. Just as a reminder to our audience, you can still submit your questions via the chat box in the attendee control panel. Um, just before we go on to the questions, Red, I wondered if you could just flick back to slide four. Um, one of the audience members missed the content on that slide, so it would be useful if we could oh, okay. on the screen. Thank you. That's absolutely fine. So this slide provides an overview of the, the qualifications that the CIM offer. And the idea is that it, you move from perhaps being from an introduction to marketing through um, to uh, providing um, uh, well, qualification for those who are experienced in marketing. And we work through different levels. So the first qualification is the Foundation Certificate in Professional Marketing. This provides an introduction to marketing. Uh, and so it's suitable for those who are new into marketing, maybe those who are entrepreneurs working at startups who want to better understand marketing and how it can work in their organization. The next uh, level of qualification the CIM offer is the Certificate in Professional Marketing, which we've been discussing throughout this presentation today. This is about building on tactical marketing skills, so it's suitable for those who 
are either new marketing executives who've been working in a marketing role perhaps for around a year, uh, and certainly aspiring marketing managers. The Diploma in Professional Marketing, uh, this is more focused on developing strategic capabilities and managing marketing, um, so strategic marketing planning, for example, um, and also managing resources within a marketing department or managing brands. Um, and this is more suitable for experienced marketing executives, so those that probably have two or more years' experience in a marketing role, um, or marketing managers. And then the, net, the final CIM quali uh, qualification is for uh, the Marketing Leadership Program. And this is about developing leadership skills, strategic business capabilities. This is really for very experienced marketers with sort of five to seven years experience in the marketing role, marketing directors uh, or marketing consultants. I think I mentioned when I previously looked at this slide uh, and showed this slide that if you are in an international market, there is a further postgraduate qualification that's similar to the marketing leadership program that you could look at. But this is just what I put here is just for the UK audience. That's I hope that's great. Fun. Thank you, Red, for clarifying that for us. Um, so just to go on to some of the other questions then. Um, so the first question is, um, how roughly how big are the assignments that we would have to complete on this qualification? Now, I'm now trying to add up some numbers in my head. Um, I think the... Uh, Yes, around 5,000 words. They're broken down into three tasks. Uh, we usually recommend, based on the total qualification times, um, around about 20 hours uh, to be spent on your assignment. Now, that sounds like a lot of time, but actually when you break it down into days that you might spend in a few hours here and there, um, it's not really that long at all. Um, it would be based upon an organization that you're working for right now, one you might have worked for in the past, or one that you're very familiar with. Um, so it's very practical. Um, and as part of your assessment, you would be supported by a tutor who would give you feedback on a draft of that assessment as well. Thank you, Red. Um, another question uh, about the assignments. Um, do, do the students work on them individually or as a group? You always work on your assignment individually um, as it's about your own organization and or, or an organization of your choice. And there are rules around collusion uh, that CIM detail. So we always recommend you work on them individually. That's not to say that you're not in a classroom, you're talking about the different tasks, but you would work on them individually because you're not allowed to obviously work with each other on those sorts of things as part of sort of the, the, um, the rules for the qualification that CIM put out. Thank you. Um, another question is, um, can, uh, can a student just do one module or do they have to do the, all three of the modules to get the qualification? To get the qualification, you have to do all three modules. However, uh, CIM have a bite-sized approach. So if you wanted to take just one module, you could gain a um, you could gain an award in a specific uh, for a specific module. So an award in digital marketing techniques. I think that's correct, Sarah. Yes, that is correct. So yeah, you can you can do all three and gain the full qualification. But if if you if you're restricted with time. Um, or you just fancy doing one of them that took your interest, and yes, you can just do uh, a module as a standalone and still achieve an award for that module. Um, next question specifically here um, from somebody is, uh, they're saying they're not a marketing executive. Um, however, they work for a marketing software organization um, and are heavily involved in marketing strategy and implementation. Do you think this qualification would be suitable for them? That's a great question. Um, I, I hate to say this, but it really does depend in terms of how how long you've worked in that role, uh, what your involved your day to day involvement is in marketing, and what's great is we do uh, the CIM offer a diagnostic tool, uh, and also uh, study centres can advise based upon your individual circumstances, and that's what I would advise in this instant. Um, I certainly think you'd be able to do this particular qualification uh, and you'd be suitable for it. But I do wonder where, whether if you have got extensive experience, um, you know, especially around strategic elements, uh, and it also depends whether you've got uh, a degree or relevant degree, um, you might want to look at the next level up, which is the level six qualification, which is the diploma in professional marketing. But again, it, it depends sort of on the length of your experience in, in marketing and that role. But I would suggest that you speak to a study centre of your choice and they'll be able to help you. Thank you, Red. 
Um, another question, do all assignments need referencing uh, or is it just certain modules that require this? So if you're doing an assignment-based module, uh, for, so for this certificate in professional marketing uh, and certificate in professional digital marketing, and you're doing an assignment, so that would be the planning campaigns module, customer insights and digital marketing techniques, you will need to reference because it's an academic qualification. Even though they're very practical, we still have to adhere to academic standards. So yes, you would need to reference using the Harvard method. In an examination, as it's a um, multiple choice examination, you're not required to reference. You just need to tick some boxes. Thank you. Um, the next question is, um, can I take a break from studying midway through a qualification? Excuse me. Yes, you can. Um, so study centres will offer you a different amount of time to, to complete your studies. The qualification usually takes around one year to complete all three modules, um, but you can if you know life happens, uh, things get busy at work, things happen at home, um, and you might need to take a break from your studies. Uh, so the Oxford College of Marketing, we offer three years for you to complete your qualification. So if you do need to take a break, you've got that opportunity. And I know other study centres offer some um, additional time over, over, over than a year that you might need for your qualification. So yes. Bottom line is, you, if things happen and you need to take a break, you certainly can. Thank you, Red. Um, and another question here, do I have to be signed up to the study centre to do the qualifications? Yes, you do. You do need an accredited study centre to undertake a CIM qualification. Thank you. Um, we don't seem to have any more come through, so I'm just going to give it a couple more, uh, a few more seconds to see if anyone wants to um, send us any more questions just before we uh, close the webinar. Okay. I do hope everyone's found it useful today. Okay, so, so nothing else has come through. So um, I'd just like to say thank you to Red for uh, presenting the webinar and thank you to everyone for attending. Um, once you leave today's webinar, you will receive a survey on the presentation um, and we would really appreciate it if you could provide us with your feedback. On behalf of CIM, I'd like to thank you for being with us today and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.